Welcome to the last part of the Attention and Transformers section. So we're going to look a little bit on how we actually can use transformers in language modeling. So the obvious thing that we need to talk about is BERT. Um, so BERT has essentially revolutionized how people do NLP. Before that, people used to build very, very different models for different NLP tasks. And they used this in order to squeeze out as much information as they possibly could from fairly moderately sized training data. What BERT did instead is it replaced this with a massively pre-trained model on a lot of unlabeled data. And ever since we've seen larger and larger models uh, going up to, you know, 100 billion and more tokens uh, going up to over 100 billion parameters. So this has since then really snowballed into a contest of who can build the largest model. In any case, let's actually start with how we got there. Um, so in computer vision, while well, it's kind of straightforward, you take your favorite image classification data set and you get the feature extractor effectively, which will turn your cat into a bunch of vectors. And if you were to use logistic regression on this bunch of vectors, you'd get a cat classifier. Okay. For NLP, we want to do a similar thing where we can go and take the input sentence, like I love this movie, and then infer from that that, okay, that's a positive sentiment. We've already seen how transformers can be used to get really meaningful embeddings in a computationally effective manner. So now let's see how we can actually train. So we do this by <clears throat> pre-training on a number of auxiliary tasks for which we have tons of data, and then we can deploy this. So word to vec and other models didn't really use the word order quite that much, to some extent by necessity, because there just isn't that much that you can model without very, very costly approaches. And so traditional embeddings um, ignore a lot of this longer range sequential information. And furthermore, the language models only look into one direction. So it's kind of messy. Transformers address this and mind you, so BERT was the first instance of a very large transformer encoder. I mean, there were previous models, but BERT really drove home that message. So they trained on 3 billion words. So that was a lot of books in Wikipedia. And to give you an idea, so the base model used 12 transformer blocks. So remember each transformer block uses a number of transformer layers. So if we go back by a couple of slides. So remember, what you have is actually, you have multi-add attention, add a norm, then a feed-forward network, and then addition and norm. So of those blocks, transformers use 12 or, well, then 24 respectively. And then the number of embedding dimensions was 768 and 1024. By the way, reasons for picking things that are multiples of large powers of two are essentially to make stuff fit into the appropriate accelerator chips. And then, you know, 12 or 16 heads respectively. So by mostly going deeper, you triple the number of parameters from base to large. And then yes, you essentially train a large model on a large corpus. So at the time BERT was pretty big. By now people train on up to a trillion words, so GPT-3 does that, and you get much larger language models, so they've gone up by a factor of 1,000, so up to 200 billion parameters from 340 million. There's some argument as to, you know, whether that's actually a good idea, because if I use an entire server with multiple GPUs to just analyze Hello World, then maybe this is slight overkill, but be that as it may, it can be used 
reasonably efficiently to model language. Okay, so what do they do with these large amounts of text? So the first thing that you do is you want to make sure that you get meaningful embeddings that are optimized for text. So you use the usual Fourier basis uh, position embeddings, but then you add to that segment embeddings, which are like, okay, first segment, second segment, third segment, in other words, break it up into sentences. And then the last thing is, of course, you need the appropriate token embeddings and you might pick words, but more likely than not, you would pick something like bright pair encoding uh, terms that you're then using to embed, right? The reason again for byte pair encodings is that the vocabulary can be quite monstrous. So for instance, the English language has significantly north of 100,000 unique tokens. It's just because people come up with new words and new abbreviations all the time. And it would be mission impossible to try to find a good embedding for all of them. But for BPE, this is reasonably well possible. Okay, so now that we have our embedding, how do we actually train things? The first thing is you want to have meaningful understandings for each of the terms. So what you do is you randomly mask, let's say 15% of all tokens in each sentence. And then the goal is to predict those masked tokens. So this is quite different from a standard language model, except that here you're really taking a chain and you let's say this is the chain, and you're predicting one token within that chain. In other words, you're no longer predicting P of XI given XI minus one through X1, but you're predicting P of XI given the entire string without XI. So transformers can do that easily because they're bidirectional. Mind you, this isn't very good for a language model, so GPT-3 and others are better and they are trained using a slightly different objective. But if we use the BERT style embeddings then BERT style free training, then that's what you get. Now, the next thing you need to do is you need to actually find what to estimate. Now, those masked tokens are replaced in 80% of all cases with the special character mask. And so for that one, okay, uh, the model needs to learn that it needs to fill in what goes there. And in the remaining 20%, half the time you replace it with a random token and half the time you keep the original. Now you might wonder, you know, why that split into 80, 10 and 10. Well, predicting, you know, the missing token, well, obviously you want to do that, you know, to get a good language model. The other thing you want to do though is you want the model to be able to decide, to distinguish between whether the token that's actually there is correct or whether it's incorrect. So this forces the language model to learn a meaningful representation of the original tokens. If we only picked randomly replaced tokens, then it would simply learn that all of those individual word representations would be incorrect. And so you wouldn't learn a good representation at all. So in short, you're essentially estimating P of XI given its entire Markov blanket, so given its entire context, and that can be used for a fairly good pre-training task. It's an entirely artificial task. There's no real reason why you would want to do that other than, well, learn something about the text that I gave you. And there's actually a fair amount of work on how to improve this. There's, for instance, Electra, which tries to use a much better um, alternative. So basically you use, for instance, a lower grade language model as an alternative. And so then the BERT model needs to do better than you know, the uh, lower grade imposter and so on. Likewise, a second task is you want to learn what the connection between various sentences is. So the first part was understand what individual words do. The second task is understand the meaning of text. 
Now, one good way of understanding the meaning of text is to find out whether the following sentence, which is, you know, grammatically correct and all of that, actually is logically co connected to the previous one or whether it's a non sequitur. So in doing this, it basically replaces the following sentence with a random sentence or otherwise it keeps the correct one. And so then the model has to predict whether the following sentence is correctly following or whether it's not. There are lots of variants of that. So for instance, you might just try the following thing where you take two sentences and you replace their positions. And the goal now is for the model to infer whether the order of the sentence is correct or not. Or you can use longer sequences. So that's for instance, vertex L but then you go and truncate the gradient. So this way it's very similar to what you do with BPTT for a recurrent neural network, just that you're doing it with transformers. In any case, so this, there's a lot of engineering that's currently going into figuring out better objectives, better pre-training, figuring out how you can modify the transformer architecture, for instance, by making it sparse, longer range, deeper, all sorts of things. And, you know, of course, throw more data at it, training faster, all of that. So given those two tasks, and let's just take those two pre-training tasks as, you know, some generic choice that you could be picking, <clears throat> what do we do with it? Well, one thing that you can do is you now get an embedding for every token in the original sequence, right? And then, you know, you can just use this token representation and you train something else on it. For instance, you could try to classify sentences, right? And or compare sentences. So what you do is you basically take the entire sentence, you embed it through BERT, you get, you know, a vector out of it. And for no good reason in particular, you pick the first embedding because you need to pick one. You could have also picked the last one, but I presume the first one works at least as well. That's why they published it. In any case, so you get that. And then you can use it to compare two sentences. Another thing that you could do is you could perform named entity recognition. So the goal there is you want to identify whether a token is a named entity or not. So what you go is you read the entire sentence or sentences in there, and then you train to just infer for every token whether it's an ent named entity or not and if it is it's good and if not then it's not so good the next thing will be question answering and in the simplest case you basically take the entire sequence and so the question answering here is um, find the subsequence in the text that answers the question right so for instance, if I have some text which describes various things and Alex likes coffee, yada, 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 yada. And then the question would be, what does Alex drink? Then the correct answer would be Alex likes coffee, right? Or just coffee. But basically it would pick out some of the original text as the answer. So this is different from formulating proper answers like Alex likes coffee or Alex drinks coffee, but it's often good enough for searching content. So the way how to get this done properly is given a query, you want to find out where the answer starts and where it ends. And so you just, you know, learn an appropriate softmax distribution over where the sentence should start and ditto where it ends. You train that on the BERT representations and it works surprisingly well. As a matter of fact, doing this kind of things has allowed people to push much further on a lot of NLP tasks. And by now it's comparatively simple to solve NLP problems that used to require a lot of NLP understanding before and replace it just with brute force models and data. This is maybe not as pretty, but it surely is very effective and it's significantly low the bar on who can actually build meaningful NLP models. So to summarize things, so pre-training can have a significant effect 
on the quality of what we do, simply because if we have a lot of data available, we can learn a lot and we can get meaningful representations. We can use it for downstream tasks like question answering, named entity recognition, sentiments, and so on. And by the way, there's a large industry on how to design various pre-training tasks. I just really only mentioned the very most popular, rather first ones. By now there's a lot more that can be done. And I would strongly recommend that you go and dive into the appropriate chapters or maybe take an LP course to get up to speed on this. Okay, so a bunch of book chapters that go with this and well, by all means, have a look at those, the NLP BERT and BERT datasets and BERT pre-training to give you a little bit of an idea on how to get started. Thanks a lot.